The boy who shaped our childhoods made us fall in love with the idea of being stuck forever as children, of life being nothing but fun and games, is not only that. The author, J.M. Barry, may have left hints here and there about the true dark nature behind his adaptation of the character Peter Pan. The fun elements of Peter Pan hanging out with Tinkerbell, their magic dust, his quarrels with Captain Hook, his fun banter with the Lost Boys, his story with the Darlings, particularly Wendy Darling, made us adore the character, maybe even a bit too much. Let's wait no longer to investigate whether these theories are incorrect or whether we've been seriously deluded since childhood by this beloved literary character. Now, just before we go into our explanation, we have a small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to the channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means an awful lot. So thank you very much. Now, let's begin. Who is Peter Pan? Peter Pan is a stunning adaptation of a character created by author J. M. Barry. Barry made Pan appear as a side character in his novel The Little White Bird, which was then published in 1902, but he then eliminated the character in a self-indulgent play titled The Boy Who Wouldn't Grow Up. The storyline in which Peter reappears raised public concerns. However, the plot revolved primarily around Peter Pan as a baby when he encountered fairies and birds in London's Kensington Gardens. They taught him how to fly and twinkle in the sky all the time. It's worth noting that J.M. Barry may have drawn inspiration for these characters from his long-lost brother, David, who was an early teenager and whom his mother and himself fondly remember as a boy. Barry further expanded the 1904 play Peter and Wendy into a novel which was published in 1911. It's understood that as an infant, when Peter returns home to his mother after spending time with the fairies and birds, he discovers another baby at his home. This instills feelings of rejection and he decides to go away forever. His homeland becomes Neverland where he lives with his friend Tinkerbell, a fairy who is rather possessive of Peter Pan. Aside from Tinkerbell, we see the Lost Boys who play and have fun with Peter in Neverland. It's widely assumed that these are missing boys who were children who had wandered away from their parents back in London's Kensington Gardens. And so Peter Pan takes charge of them creating a fairy tale-like place that provides happiness and a sense of only good things. In the film Peter Pan, he overhears Wendy Darling narrating and self-talking about bedtime stories and about Peter Pan. Wendy, along with her brothers Michael and John Darling, are invited by Peter Pan to visit Neverland, to which they readily agree. It was satisfying too that while Mrs. Darling is narrating the bedtime story to these three children, the shadow of Peter Pan was left in the dog's clutches, where it was then pressed and safely stored in a drawer to get it back. Peter and Tinkerbell return, asking Wendy to stitch up the shadow. Wendy appears to Peter Pan to be a good mother figure for his lost boy's gang. There's also the character of Captain Hook, of course, who is constantly seen in battle with Peter Pan, and Pan's abilities to mimic and trick people usually help him out of such difficult situations. The fact that he can fly without wings, and make objects fly too, thanks to Tinkerbell's magic, is unusual. He seems to also have difficulty keeping track of time, as his promises to meet Wendy every spring spring when she returns fall flat, as Pan doesn't remember her, nor the lost boys, nor anything else for that matter. His memory is short, and his promises are open-ended. Even in the film, during their flight to Neverland, Pan keeps forgetting about the darlings and asking for a reintroduction every time he crosses them, which bothers Wendy and makes her extremely annoyed. Peter Pan appears to ultimately live in a fantasy world and wants to keep it that way. He doesn't want any adults in Neverland. He enjoys the company of the younger children, returning to the them as adults as they continue to age. However, constant attempts by side characters to kill the main characters as they age demonstrate, perhaps, that there's something more to this story than first meets the eye. <laughs> I didn't know a codfish could journey of Peter Pan. Before his appearance in J.M. Barry's big feature, Peter Pan appeared in a number of films and television shows. Even afterwards, we were able to witness various adaptations of this character, and we're going to talk about a few of them. Peter Pan 1924 It's in 1924 that Paramount Pictures releases the first film edition of the Peter Pan story, which was entirely silent. In contrast to the play, this is the first film in which Tinkerbell is portrayed by an actor. It's an entertaining and ultimately sweet-natured movie. 
The Peter Pan Movie 1953. This celebrated version of the Peter Pan story presents us an animated version of the boy and tells a musical tale about him taking the darlings to Neverland where they meet the lost boys and of course Pan's nemesis Captain Hook. This movie version is also quite pure in nature retaining its innocence as Disney altered the core text slightly to remove the darker elements. Hook, 1991. Steven Spielberg's direction features a battle between an adult Pan and his old enemy Captain Hook. Unlike the popular belief that Peter Pan never grows up, this movie depicts Pan as an adult. The film's main cast included Julia Roberts, Dustin Hoffman and Robin Williams of course. Capturing the main essence of this film, it was more a parody than a version of Barry's works, but it was enjoyed by many audiences. Return to Neverland 2002. Disney releases this animated musical sequel to its original film, Peter Pan, in the year 2002. The film continues the original story by featuring Jane, Wendy's daughter, who is initially quite dismissive of Wendy's stories about Peter Pan until she finds herself stuck in the clutches of Captain Hook. Peter Pan 2003. This was another live action film. The storyline was almost identical to the previous release and it included some romances between the character Peter Pan and Wendy Darling. Neverland 2004. The film, starring Kieran Knightley as Tinkerbell and Bob Hodkind as Mr. Smee, follows Peter and the Lost Boys as pickpockets. They're hired by Jimmy Hook, looking to steal a magical orb that would allow him to travel to Neverland. Overall, not as memorable but still a good watch. Pan 2015. This is the story, or the backstory should we say, of Peter Pan, including his current location, his stances and his relationships. Hugh Jackman appears in the film, and Peter in this film is generally mischievous, funny and smart. Overall, another good watch. Peter and Wendy 2015. A sequel to Pan 2015, but with a very different approach. This story deviates from the original to include some creative elements. The story begins with an ill young girl telling Pan's story to other children. She sees herself within the story and then it unfolds from there. Wendy 2020. This movie, while following the same plot as the original works, deviates in terms of the main character's focus. In this movie, we see more of Wendy and Captain Hook's perspectives. The themes of youth and overcoming ageism remain central to the film, however there is another element of seriousness to it. Come Away 2020. This movie combines Peter Pan with Alice in Wonderland. It has excellent visuals and takes a unique approach to the original movie. Alice and Peter, who have lost their older brother, end up in a fairy tale on their way to sell a family heirloom. Is Peter Pan a dark side story of the author? Regarding J.M. Barry and his intentions with this publication, there's a lot of rumours and theories. His writing, which tells the tale of a child who never grows up, became intertwined with his own life narrative and his interactions with George Llewellyn Davies, a five-year-old he met in Kensington Gardens. Nobody is entirely certain about the specifics and the intimacy shared between J.M. Barry and his wife, despite the fact that he was married. Simply put, as far as the author's intentions or actions with younger boys are concerned, no negative remarks have ever been made about him. Any unfounded rumours are perhaps better described as interpretations, but nobody, not even the boy's father or mother, objected to or limited Barry's proximity to boys. That reveals a great deal about his behaviour and his mannerisms and goals, perhaps. He told George and his brothers the story of Peter Pan, which eventually became a big hit when it was turned into a play in 1904, and then later a book in 1911. Like anyone else, J.M. Barry needed love and perhaps could be lonely, but regarding any accusations of paedophilia, well, it's never been on the cards. Peter! There were 50 pirates. Oh, she! Why were the Peter Pan shows potentially unsafe for children? Because Peter Pan and the Lost Boys could fly without the fairy dust of the original story, there's a rumour that Peter Pan was a little too dangerous for child audiences. The author felt compelled to include a foreboding element to his story when he learned that children were hurting themselves, attempting to fly from their bedroom windows, trying to join Peter and his gang. There are additional reports of children attempting to fly even after the addition of the fairy dust into the narrative, as well 
as reports of children attempting to fly without realising this was a requirement. It's a little harsh to reflect this on J.M. Barry. However, some stage productions of Peter Pan went so far as to divide child audiences into two groups, according to their IQ. Overall, given the popularity of the story, especially the animated versions amongst children, the addition of the fairy dust in order to be able to fly was seen as a novel and welcome choice from the viewpoint of many concerned parents. Does Peter Pan truly manipulate children? Peter Pan carries an adult affliction. He is seen to grow furious in the presence of adults, arming himself and equipping himself by any means to rebel against adults. He also consistently sides with children on the surface level, notably assembling an army of lost boys. He wants to broaden and expand his concept of Neverland to include children where they will never grow up and can have all the fun they want in life. Wendy Darling is expected to grow up, with her parents constantly asking her to act more more mature, but the child in her chooses Peter Pan's bait of remaining a child with no responsibilities. And so she flew away to the island, where we see any adult characters attempting to kill Wendy. What's more, the mermaids, the crocodile, and Tinkerbell represent Wendy's time, which would soon come to an end because she must become an adult, and that adult could never belong in a place like Neverland until Peter Pan had lived. It's said that Peter Pan despises adults to the point of breathing twice as much to kill adults out there. That's in accordance with a theory that one breath in Neverland equates to one death of an adult outside. He can be pessimistic and controlling, and he despises Captain Hook primarily because of his age, viewing him as a threat to his sense of belonging and childhood fantasy. The fact that Tinkerbell became jealous when Wendy arrived on the island was also superficial, and it was more of a collective desire among island residents to kill off people approaching adulthood. The Lost Boys, Captain Hook and Wendy are all victims of this false pretense of never growing up because everyone grows up. And despite the fact that Neverland is a fantasy land with powers, it's impossible to stop time or the aging process. In order to maintain control, Peter Pan removes such people, preserving a fictitious and absurd image of childhood in front of his minions, allowing him to govern them with the sense of peace and the enjoyment that he seeks. The dark theory that Peter Pan is a murderer. There are plenty of theories about the true nature of the renowned Peter Pan. There are some who believe he is simply an innocent boy, while others believe that at heart he's a villain, a killer, and so on. To unwind this, we need to dig into the details. After watching movies and collecting reviews, one of the outstanding conspiracy theories is that Peter Pan is an angel of God who appears to children after their death. These children would encounter Peter Pan on their way to heaven, and the fact that they are are unable to grow up is due to their demise. However, an even darker conspiracy theory about Peter Pan is that he is in fact a murderer. This theory stems from the many scenes, strange in nature, that come from the movies and the books, showing him to be a control freak, but not allowing the lost boys, or anyone else for that matter, to grow up beyond a certain age. Pan's obsession with children remaining trapped in a cycle of pretentious innocence and wonder appears ultimately cruel and staged. The missing lost boys, particularly those those who express an interest in going out or perhaps growing older are killed. It's seen elsewhere with Wendy's character as she approaches that critical threshold of becoming an adult. Mermaids and everyone else state unequivocally that they intend to kill her. The fact that the contrasts have been drawn between J.M. Barry and Peter Pan, as well as how their lives turn out, is also fascinating. How J.M. Barry had befriended their neighbor's son and acquired favoritism over one of his own children, meeting them in Kensington Gardens of London itself, it drew major suspicion from the public. Conspiracy was probably always going to abound. However, what is clear from J.M. Barry's writing is a sense of racism and xenophobia which is shown to the Native Americans. And while the 1950s animated version of the movie attempts to display this in a more friendly and affable nature, that same racist tone remains to this day. The stereotypical nature of the characters, their tools and weapons were all mentioned and correspond to J.M. Barry's description of Native Americans. Unfortunately, the casual racism within J.M. Barry's writings may not have been out of place in the early 1900s when he wrote Peter Pan. However, the later decisions to cast non-Native American actors to play Native American characters in Hollywood echo these. Another popular conspiracy theory about Peter Pan is that Captain Hook was once a lost 
boy and a member of Peter's gang who had managed to escape Peter and flee, eventually becoming his nemesis, and it makes a lot of sense. Remember, Peter Pan has a forgetful nature, and he's unable to perceive his enemy with the same vigour and the same passion, which is highly questionable. Hook's crew, in fact, seems to be made up of adults similar to the lost boys he'd once deserted, and that is also discussed in the theory. These same pirates were also once little boys who didn't want to grow up, and so became outlaws instead. Another, even darker theory stems from the movie Once Upon a Time, and says that Peter Pan returns from Neverland as an adult and kidnaps various young boys in order to perceive them as the lost boys in Neverland. This provides him with that false sense of youth, allowing him to maintain an illusion. In 2023, in the Peter Pan and Wendy movie, we see a different side to Peter, however, as he mourns the loss of his mother, missing her and grieving for a long time. However, he doesn't share his feelings with anyone bottling up his emotions or dismissing them with egotism, and rebelling against those around him. The idea of leaving Neverland does not appeal to Peter Pan. The only ones that leave are those who Peter Pan did not want to be around. Marvelous verdict. Peter Pan, this fictional character who fought for the love and affection of children, and occasionally even adults too, is seemingly open about his true motivations and desires. Naturally, all sorts of theories arose about the author's personality and traits, which concerned people and still do. It's worth saying, however, that re-watching children's movies as an adult has the potential to create new narratives to the viewer that may not be intended. Equally, an adult audience member will notice and pick up on things that a child may totally overlook or ignore. As children, we were wired to see the good in everyone and everything, and that makes it impossible to draw conclusions about Peter Pan being a murderer. The Disney films may have also made significant changes to keep the films positive for younger audiences. In truth, however, the core text does not differ greatly from the movie adaptations. We've witnessed various conspiracy theories, and the possibility of Peter Pan being a killer undoubtedly would overshadow shadow any pretense of innocence. It's a difficult pill to swallow, but it's reality, and Peter Pan is no longer this magical fairy who would fly up without wings and take children on day trips to Neverland, but rather a control freak who you could perceive as keeping children in his shelter for purely his own amusement or even pleasure, to maintain his own governance, to keep his own peace, and when he felt a straw of individuality or witnessed any brains or independence growing from these children, he would outcast them, potentially even killing them. And all always maintaining that authority over the gang of lost boys around him acting like puppets. Still to this day, there are many lost boys who would follow, and many who still believe in fairy tales. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Otherwise, have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.